Hey guys, it's Michelle. Um, this is gonna be another. Let's see if this light helps anything. Mm mm, that ain't helping. Mm, sure. I don't know if that's actually doing anything. Okay, so this is another <clears throat> transition 101 video. <clears throat> but before I get started, let me explain this head thing and let me get a sip of water. So, if you guys watch my videos, <clears throat> you know I had facial feminization surgery, and as part of my recovery, I have to wear this thing. <clears throat> so let me just explain what it is, because it looks really weird. This thing's covering my chin, uh, and my whole face. See, I look a little more normal, right? <laughs> um, there's gauze under here, just for padding, there's no, like, open wounds or anything. And then this thing goes around my entire head. <clears throat> So now that that's out of the way, let me show you one more time. See? I don't look that crazy, it's just I have to wear this thing. Alright. So this video is going to be about hormones. Um, how to get your hormones and all that business. Um, if you w have been watching like all my videos since I first started posting stuff, then you've probably seen my transition. Um, from before hormones to where I am now. So you guys know how I got them and the steps I went through. Um, let me say a few things about hormones. I will tell you that if they're right for you, and I'll get into how you know if they're right for you, but if they are right for you, then yeah, they're really, they do make you, like, feel better when you start. And it's not like they magically make you feel better, but, like, psychologically you feel like, oh, this is great. <clears throat> I know my body isn't gonna get any more masculine. I know that <clears throat> certain things are gonna be more feminine. And it really is kind of a, for me anyway, it was definitely a relieving sort of, um kind of a burden off my shoulders. I am going to hold this down because it keeps my, it helps me to speak a little easier. Um, I feel so silly. But don't get me wrong, hormones aren't magic. Um, you know, I'm, I've only been on them for like, actually, is today my, today is my seven month update. <laughs> So I'll just make that a part of this video too. But I was off them for a week um, before my surgery. So it hasn't technically been a full seven months. But anyway. So I've only been on hormones for seven months. And while I have seen significant changes, I haven't seen like, I don't think the bulk of what I'm actually going to be experiencing throughout my transition. Um... Like I said, when you first start, um, it is exciting. Just because you're like, oh, finally, I'm on hormones. I'm sorry about this mask thing, guys. I really am. But what are you going to do? Um, and for the first few months, you're constantly looking for to see, like, results. You're like, is my skin softer? Do I have boobs? And all that kind of stuff. And you're not really going to notice anything that for about three months. It'll be three months before you're like, okay, I see some stuff happening or I feel some changes. But don't let that discourage you. You're going to feel awesome when you first start and the newness of hormones never goes away. It never did for me anyway. I'm, I'm always excited to take my hormones. But they aren't magic. Um, I do not um, advise or endorse or um, promote or anything like that. I, I'm not for um, self-medicating. I think it's a really dangerous thing and I think it's a last resort kind of thing. Um, a lot of girls in the community have, I keep grabbing this, I'm sorry. A lot of girls in the community have a huge thing against the legal way to obtain hormones um you the process goes like this 
you need to see a therapist, um, preferably someone, in fact, I think they have to specialize in gender, um, gender therapy with, you know, um, and after you have to see them for at least three months, but some therapists can keep you for longer if they don't feel like it was sufficient enough time. Um, but you have to see them for at least three months before they can approve and give you consent to start hormones. And then you go to like a doctor. Um, generally they'll have you see an endocrinologist. Uh, I'm not seeing an endocrinologist. I'm seeing a general doctor. Um, let's see. I first saw an endocrinologist, but he wasn't giving me a big enough dose. So my therapist had me see a different doctor who was just like a general family kind of doctor, but she, because she's in Kansas city and I'm not, I was able to convince my family doctor to give me the prescription for hormones. So, but that's a recent development. So, um, I'm going to try and not hold on to this and just talk. It's going to be difficult, though. Blech. Um, so, oh, what was I saying? So you see that therapist for at least three months. They give you consent, and then you go to uh, an endocrinologist or whatever doctor will give you the prescription. And they will require you, <clears throat> if they give you the prescription, they're going to require you you will be required to get blood work done every so often um and checkups every so often because hormones affect your blood um i think it's technically the anti-androgen that you take um because you'll take estrogen and there's lots of different types i take estradiol and it's in pill form some people take injectables I think you can even take it in a patch. I don't know if they make estrogen in a gel. I know they do that for um, <clears throat> female to male transsexuals with their testosterone. Um, this might, this whole business of me holding this might be annoying throughout this entire video, but I'm sorry. I hope <laughs> I get a couple cute stills to make as, to choose to make my uh, display picture for this video so that I'm not just like, mm, cause that'd be really bad. Watch that be my display picture. All right, so, but that's why I'm not okay with self-medicating. A lot of girls are like, oh, I shouldn't have to prove that I'm transgender to anyone. I shouldn't need consent to get hormones. And you know what? Yeah, I agree. I shouldn't have to, but it is a medication and it does affect your blood and you can get clots and die from hormones if you aren't being um, monitored by a doctor and if you don't have the prescription for it then they're going to be like why is this in your system and then it'll just be a problem um i do understand that girls who are in particular situations where they can't get hormones like there isn't a therapist um nearby like or you know like they just you know that they have to that your last resort is <clears throat> self-medicating. But I would never tell someone that that's how they should start. Like, you should legitimately try the therapy and the, uh, you know, the legal way to do it. Now, everybody's therapist is different. Again, I'm sorry about this. So, I can't really tell you how therapy is going to go for you. But for me, I didn't have to, like, it's not like every day you go in and you have to, like, prove yourself. They're going to talk to you about your gender identity. And you'll tell them how you feel. Like, tell them who you are, who, who you want to be, what you think hormones will do for you, what you think this transition will do for you. And they'll, they aren't, you know, they aren't necessarily deciding if you're you're um, worthy of hormones, but it's just to make sure that you're, you know, aware of what transition means, <clears throat> not to have unrealistic expectations, and to make sure that you aren't mixed up about what being transsexual is, because a lot of trans girls are mixed up about that stuff. 
Not to say that every therapist is going to be able to tell you better than you know yourself, or that they'll be able to determine if you're transsexual or something else, but I certainly think it's a lot healthier and safer. And you, I mean, really, you aren't like, they aren't like questioning your gender identity. They're, I mean, I guess they are. I don't know. I didn't think it was a big deal. I just went in, I knew who I was, so it wasn't a big deal. My therapy sessions were kind of boring, actually. Like, I'm sure, I mean, my therapist seemed kind of like, well, there's nothing really to talk about because you're completely healthy and normal and you're right for hormones, but we just have to get enough sessions in, you know, for at least three months. And she ended up kind of tweaking it. I didn't have to go a full three months, um, which was great. But, uh, like, you know, like I said, it's not as traumatic. I mean, I, again, my therapist might have been super amazing, unlike other people's therapists, but <clears throat> I think the process is worth it because now, like, I can have my, you know, blood tested and I don't have to worry about randomly clotting up and dying one day. I don't know. I don't know if anybody is actually afraid of that, but it happens. Um, so yeah, I don't know what else to say about hormones, but this is my Transition 101 hormones video. I haven't made a Transition 101 video in a while, I just felt like I needed to tell you guys. Maybe I'll make a 101 about facial feminization surgery, although I made a pretty, I mean, two pretty big videos about it. Um, if you guys have any questions about hormones, let me, tell me. I'm not going to show you, I mean, like, there are places online that you can buy hormones off, like, the black market or whatever. Um, I really cannot suggest doing that. I would honestly search for therapists in your area. Like, there's nobody in Columbia, where I live, Columbia, Missouri. There are no therapists in this area who specialize in gender, um, gender therapy, and yeah, I had to go to Kansas City. I drove to... Uh, I didn't... Okay. My therapist actually did s sessions over Skype. And maybe if you're in my situation where there's no one around you, but there is someone like a few hours away, maybe you can convince them to do Skype too. I don't know. But I did... A couple of times I did have to drive to Kansas City and have a, just an hour-long session with her. <clears throat> um, but I found her pretty easy. I mean, I would just Google gender therapists in your state, in your area, um, and do it like that. Um, other than that, I really have nothing else to add. Uh, be safe and be healthy and be realistic too. Hormones really are not what's going to make you a girl. It's not like, like hormones are helping me to present better and it's helping to change like my brain chemistry um, to be more like that of a female, which puts, it, it kind of, if you ever feel like your head and your body, and this is every transsexual's problem, that your head and your body aren't, like, on the same, um, like wavelength, <laughs> hormones help to kind of soften that, that difference between your body and your head, like, it's really tough to explain, but I just feel more myself and more in my own body now that testosterone's been reduced and estrogen has been enhanced, and, you know, some, I mean, I hear that hormones are, like, the biggest test of your transsexualness, <laughs> of your transgender identity, and that, it, you know, if hormones aren't right for you, you will know not long after starting them, you'll be like, I feel wrong, I don't like this, this isn't right for me, I feel funny, I don't like, um, <clears throat> yeah. Oh, I guess I should mention other risks about hormones. And some, uh, uh, da 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 da, like, um, what's that word? Like, old wives tale type stuff, like, rumors like you know what I'm trying to say stuff that people say that ain't true about hormones
stuff you should know, you do become sterile if you continue hormones, and you will lose some function of your genitals. Um, now that I've been on them for about seven months, I'm pretty sure it's too late to, like, freeze any sperm. Uh, I bet if I got off hormones, they, that ability, you know, my potency might come back, but I'm not sure, and I can't really afford to freeze my sperm. But if you want children in the future, like, you know, that came from you, then you would have to invest in putting sperm in a sperm bank for a while. Um, you can still enjoy sex on with hormones. Um, it's probably more of a problem for older transitioners. Um, I can still maintain an erection. I can still do whatever I need to. Uh, it does become more difficult to climax, though. And the way I explain it is, before hormones, orgasms were pretty much a dime a dozen. I mean, like, unless you really worked at it. I mean, but point is, as a guy, you can pretty much get off whenever you want, real quick. Now it's like, I really need to be in the mood. I can't just do, like, a quickie right before bed unless I'm, like, in the mood. Um, it's a lot more mental. Like, I have to get my head into it. It's it's less visual, more emotional. Like, before, all I'd need to do is, like, look at a video or look at pictures of whatever it is that turns me on. And wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. <laughs> but now it's more involved. Like... <clears throat> I can't just look at a picture of a hot guy. I have to think about the guy and what his personality is like and what it'd be like if he held my hand. And I mean, that's a little bit of a stretch, but it's it's definitely more involved with your emotions and how you're feeling. It's more of a female orgasm. I'm not going to say it's more intense. Um, I'm not actually, I can't say that because you don't, you will lose the ability to ejaculate nothing comes out and in some ways it's a good thing because it's less clean up and you can fake an orgasm now but um it does take away <clears throat> a little bit from the orgasm experience the male orgasm experience anyway um you know it was something i was worried about before hormones like i was like oh man am i ever going to be able to enjoy you know sex again and while I'm not, like, sexually active, I do masturbate. I don't know why I'm being so open about this, but I am. So, TMI or whatever, I'm just letting you girls know. Um, I, I still do, and I still can. It might not be like that for everyone, but you still can. I'm assuming if you, as long as you use it, you won't lose it. But if you don't use it, then you will lose it. That's kind of what I've heard. <coughs> um yeah that's all i have to say about hormones i know this is another 20 minutes long but i'm giving you all the information i can sorry again about my little headdress that should be gone within a week actually i won't have to wear it anymore okay guys that's all i'm gonna say thanks for watching bye bye